Good evening, everybody. This is Tom Asad from NeuralMarketTrends.com, and welcome to my 11th video. Today, or tonight, I want to talk about a new plugin that was unveiled at RCOM 2010. For the people who attended this event, probably want to skip this video. But for those who didn't, I want to show you what was unveiled at RCOM 2010 to help you answer the question for metadata learning, which type of learners should I use? Often, I'm emailed and asked, Tom, I have this type of problem, this type of data set. What kind of learner should I use? Well, now we have a new plugin that will help ease us into finding the better learner to use with higher accuracy rates without having to go and build many sophisticated models to do multiple testing and then compare and compile and choose. So, this plugin, to start off with, this plugin was first unveiled on the first day of the conference. Unfortunately, I missed the first part of this presentation, which was, let's go here, which was called Pattern Recognition Engineering. And this is where the plugin was unveiled. And it was later talked about when I walked in from my trip to Germany, I walked in on the presentation for landmarking for media learning using Rapid Iron, which built off of this plugin. The plugin was made available right after the conference, and I installed it in the Rapid Miner, and I began playing around with it, and I was amazed at what I can do with it. So, why don't we get started? Let's load up Rapid Miner. First things first, what you need to see is you need to install the plugin. Let's go here to update Rapid Miner. Let's take a look at where it is. It's currently fetching. The updates and you're going to find all the way at the bottom here the P-A-R-E-N package. Pattern stands for pattern recognition. You, if you don't have that installed you need to click on it and you need to install it. As you can see here it's grayed out. I have it installed. So how do you begin? Well, very easy. For example, let's use one of the pre-loaded data repositories that comes with RapidMiner. We're going to use IRIS. IRIS is the famous data repository for irises. So let's just take a look at what it is. Okay. We're not going to save it. And what you have here in the data view, you have an ID, you have the label, which happens to be the iris name, and then you have these various, these four attributes. Okay. In the metadata view, you see that the ID is the ID, the label is nominal, and all the attributes are real numbers. Very simple, straightforward. There's 150 examples. Let's go back here. What we want to do is we want to delete this, and we want to go to Tools. Go all the way to the bottom where it says Automatic System Construction. Right there it should be a clue to tell you how easy this is going to be. Click on this. It will cancel. We're not going to save this. Go back here and try it again. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Step one of three. Let's go select the data. First, you need to select the data. So we're going to select Iris under samples. And it comes up with this interface. Step two out of three. It has now done a very simplistic analysis on your data and identified the top classifying learners for this particular data set. Now this will always change. This will always change with your data set, with your meta data set. Now it has said that the top three, LibSVM, nearest neighbors, and random forest wiki operators should give you the higher predicted accuracy. Now Right now, it's currently defaulted to select and evaluate the top one. Um, you can do all, I guess there's all seven of them here, or you can do the top two or top three, whatever you like. But according to 
what this system is saying, the plugin is saying, is that libsvm, the support vector machine, will give you the highest predicted accuracy with the lowest root mean square error. But we're not going to evaluate one, we're going to evaluate two. Let's do two. Press next. And you can see here, it's doing the calculations. The nearest neighbor finished first with an actual accuracy of 0.96, which is different than 0.96H, which was what the predicted accuracy is. So now it's doing an analysis and trying to classify this data and give you an actual accuracy for it. We're at 67%, going higher, we're almost done. And once we're done, it'll tell us what the actual accuracy is for the libsvm, so we can compare it to the nearest neighbor. 0.973. Okay, I think we're going to choose the libsvm. So what do we do now? What's the next step? Well, all we do is we click this little circle. We can select it, and it'll select the svm, or if we wanted to do the nearest neighbor, we can do that here but we want to do the libsvm. We can click finish and watch what happens. The plugin has automatically created a model for you. It currently just shows the data loader, which is the retrieve, which is the iris. It also creates a missing value operator, or it installs it to help you overcome any missing values. Um, it also has nominal to binomial operator data transformations, nominal to numerical, etc. It installs a normalization operator and the SVM. But now here's something interesting. If you click on the lib SVM, it has automatically did some basic parameter optimization for you to determine the best SVM type, kernel type, the gamma, and the C coefficient. You can see here it figured all those out to give you the better accuracy. So now if we were to run this, and let's do click this over here. We'll clean this up a little bit, so we'll just delete this. We'll delete this. Connect these guys. Run it here. Save it. And there you have it. Here is your kernel model. Sorry. Text view, you can see number of classes is three, support vectors, etc. And there you have it. Now, that is not the only way to do this. You could start over and use the landmarking operator. So let's go back and grab our data. Same old iris, we'll connect it. And now we will search for the landmarking. you have it. So now we're connected. Now, with the landmarking operator, you can see you have some options here. Now, I need for you to understand that uh, depending on how your data is structured, some of these items will not work for you well. Um, for instance, with this iris data set, um, can't, you know, normalizing the data set you can do, but linear discriminant you can't do. So let's run it here. And what this will do is this will give you a similar output to what the automatic construction system did. Run. Here it gives you, in data view, what is the highest accuracy for the particular operator you want to use. Here is a 1K nearest neighbor, worst node operator, decision node, average node, naive base, and I believe a randomly chosen one. You can see here in this case, it would look like the naive base and the 1K nearest neighbor would have the higher accuracy. Okay, now let's try it more interesting. Let's try it with some, get rid of this, get rid of this. And now we're gonna try it with actually some market data. Long time ago, I had created some, or I used some training data for I believe it was stock market or gold. Let's take a look here. Run it for the gold trend. And what I did was I had I had some trend classification for GC. I classified it was going up or down. 
I had the closing prices of oil, the, the S&P 500, the German DAX, and the 10-year note. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the automatic construction feature for the pattern recognition plugin to tell me which is the better operator to use. Get rid of this one again. We'll go back to Tools, Automatic System Construction. Now we select the data. It analyzes it and it says, hey, look, in this case, the neural net operator is going to be the better one, followed by libSVM, then random forest weka operator, and so forth. But let's just do an analysis of both. Run it, run them both. The libSVM is classifying the data, classifying the trend data, which is my metadata. Done. Now it's looking at the neural net. You can see here that the actual prediction is 60.07 versus what it was being predicted to be 60.28. Now it has optimized, done some basic parameter optimization for you. here, And the neural net is 0.611, so slightly better. So we'll load that. Voila, and here it is, it's done again. And you can see it, uh, it created a missing value operator, et cetera, like we did before. Uh, some of the other operators, if you choose them, will have a different um, set of operators to use. But what's interesting is here is that the neural net, it has selected 0.03 for my learning rate and 0.2 for my momentum. Now this, just to remember everybody, the lower these numbers are, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, uh, the less overfitting you're going to have, but it's going to be a lot slower uh, for the neural net. So let's run this again. So example set. Voila, and here we go. Here's our neural net. Here's the example set. And from there, you can save the model. You can then you can either take this information, do more cross-validation to test it on, but this gives you a good insight on what operators to use that have a better shot of training your data, your specific data that you have, um, to help learn uh, and train the data to make it more accurate. And knowing that is perhaps the biggest chunk of uncertainty that faces data miners out there. What operator to use, how to use it, and it gives you a good step forward on how to do more parameter optimization and build your better prediction set. This is Thomas Ott for NoahMarketTrends.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's good to be back. And for those who missed RCOM 2010, well, that was your loss. I sure hope to see you next year because it's going to be even better. Have a good evening.